Okay, welcome. Um, second time to the Chalk Valley History Festival. Welcome back, but I understand you are local. Yes. How good is it to have a lovely, accessible history festival right on your doorstep? Well, it's super good because, you know, I mean, we got here in about five minutes, <laughs> came in with a... Some more uh, just convenient. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. No, it was re it's really lovely. And what, I mean, goodness gracious, you couldn't get a more beautiful setting on the planet, could you? And we've got warmth and it's not too... Sun well, you know, it's going to be sunny, so it's great. It's, it's beautiful and they've done a brilliant job. Yeah. 100%. Now, uh, you're, you, well, you featured in a talk earlier today. Uh, you're featuring one on Friday, but really we're here to talk about your new book, uh, which is Beastly, A New History of Animals and Us. Can you just give us a little bit about that? OK, so Beastly is the 40,000 year story of animals and us, um, from the smallest microbe to the largest animal that ever lived. And I um, explore the relationship it's, just, it's about the changing kinship. So I explore the relationship through history, science, uh, through inspiring example of those humans that have stepped really closely into animal worlds. And um, I make the case that uh, the planet's health, um, that animals can save the planet's health if we can save them okay. uh, through their ecological services, but also um, I also look at their own, their intelligence and their abilities and that how vastly underestimated they are and that we have underestimated them. And I just wanted to trace back why, how that has all happened and how we've got to the place that we've got to, which is not a good place, <laughs> not a good place. No. And I wanted to understand it because uh, they're inextricably tied up with climate change and all the big hum human uh, challenges that we've got, the, the planet's challenges, um, desertification, uh, flooding, fire risk, all those ha are connected with our relationship with, with the planet's other inhabitants. So I thought I'd better write a book about it. <laughs> yeah. You talk quite a lot about the, the, the relationship. Is there kind of any examples you can give of that? Um, well, I... <laughs> What I did was I, I mean, there's many examples. Yeah, so I'm, I, I looked at people that have studied animals very closely or yeah. Darwin, for instance, and, and how, he, how he got to understand our whole process of evolution. But one of the things that really tipped me into this book okay. was I was sent a photograph, an extraordinary photograph of an enormous boar okay. with her front feet on this huge oak table and there was a girl feeding her breadcrumbs and it was in a dining room and there was 18th century clocks and there was a candelabra that was precariously alight and it I was completely spellbound by this this photograph and then I found out where it came from found a whole load more photographs of this extraordinary person with all these extraordinary animals and I was just completely spellbound so I two years later I find myself <laughs> looking through the window of this of this Forester's Lodge into okay. the room where this photograph was taken um, in the Bielabysia forest in Poland oh, wow. and um, the person who was the, the subject of the photograph, aside from the boar Zabka, was a, a zoologist called Simona Kosak. And so she's like my lodestone through this book yep. because she, li she lived at a time with her partner who was the photographer. They hated each other to start with, but they came together over this boar. Okay. And they lived with all these animals in a way that was really quite unique. And she was studying them. It was also a hospital and an observ observ observation uh, uh, place. And um, for about 30 something years, they all lived this extraordinary life. So she, like, she was this guiding light okay. through this big, big story that I had, you know, it's a tough story. It's quite challenging mm -hmm. a lot of the time. And so I needed uh, somebody that really understood animals and had that incredible ability to cross the species divide because like, we're the only animal that really does that, mm -hmm. that we have relationships with other species that are really loving and strong relationships. Um, and we have very bad relationships too. But not many other animals have that. Okay. across species so yeah okay um you say kind of animals will shape our future um yeah. 
kind of what are your predictions, hopes? Is it it's not all doom and gloom, hopefully? It's not if we get our okay. act together. Um, you know, animals create the ecosystems on which we rely. I don't understand why people don't realise this. There's no technology out there that can work at scale, that can create clean water, filter water like, like, like shellfish do, yep. for instance. Whales, um, they, they defecate 50 tonnes of uh, iron on the surface of the ocean, each great whale. Okay. And wow. that fertilises the phytoplankton. The phytoplankton um, gives us half our oxygen and takes almost half the carbon dioxide away. Now, when the whale dies, it goes to the bottom of the ocean, 33 tonnes of carbon go with it, and it stays there for centuries. Before we went whaling, there were millions of whales. This dynamic, it's actually called the whale pump, it, it was phenomenal. So really, if we protect our whales, that, that system can come back again. They also, I mean, the phytoplankton feed the krill, which feeds the small yeah. fish, which feeds the bigger fish. More is more. And, you know, this idea that, oh, they're taking our fish, it, that it doesn't, nature doesn't work like that. Nature needs all these species to be working together. And um, Chile, uh, interesting, is doing the first nation-led, world-first sort of um, thing to, they've got these, uh, smart boys which alert shipping to where the whales are and yep. then they make them go a different course that's that's pretty exciting so you know that's a might sound a small thing but it's a big thing yep. and um, all this technology will fix us it won't we've only got proto technology mm -hmm. but we've got these animals they've been doing it for millennia <laughs> and they do it really really well and it's really frustrating listening to all this sort of ideas when in fact we yeah. should be looking after animals where they live their prospects and food so that they can do the job that we you know the soil we need to understand who lives in that soil like billions of organisms and well you went to school you can tell me who henry the eighth married but you can't tell me who lives in there mm -hmm. or sorry i could just go on and on and on about this but it's just the most important thing at the moment mm -hmm. um we need uh to just write all those relationships and nature comes back really really fast when when you do that we have a little nature reserve half an hour from here and jonathan my husband came back saying oh you wouldn't believe the invertebrates at the moment it's loud like polish loud when you go to poland you can hear them because they don't use the chemicals now you know Around here, it's not. It's a chemical farming area, and you know, it's it's a big worry um, the invertebrate because lose them, you're losing everything above them. So yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much, and enjoy the festival. <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> thank you very much, thank you. and um, you won't stop me when you start me. But I enjoyed <laughs> no, talking to you.